Now, in collision theory, there are three statements. Okay, three statements. Eh? Um, uh, make sure that you know uh, all three statements because in exam, they will ask you to use collision theory to explain uh, the factors affecting. Eh? Okay, uh, you, you need to use uh, some of these statements to help you to explain. Okay, now let's see uh, statement one eh, in collision theory. Now, statement one in collision theory it states that it's the particles of the react the particles of the reactants. Uh, this is not reacting. Uh, okay, let me do the corrections here. The particles of the reactants. So the particles of the reactants need to touch to enable formations or breakings of the bonds for a reactions to happen. Okay. Now, what does this mean? Uh? It means if we have two reactants A and B, and if you want A react with B, they must uh, touch each other, at least touch each other. Eh? For example, if they are uh, uh, a distance away, okay, very close, but uh, they do not touch each other, okay, uh, then there is no reaction. Eh? But uh, if if they can touch each other, they collide. Okay, and touch each other, uh, then only uh, reactions can happen, then they produce a new product. Uh, okay, the new product is AB. Uh, a react with B and then it produce AB. So that is the first statement. Uh. So for a, a reactants to react, at least they must be uh, collide, okay, and touch each other. Okay, so this is the first statement. Statement two. Now, statement two states that Collisions of particles of a reacting substance need to achieve a certain minimum energy, and the energy is called the activation's energy, in order to produce a reaction. Statement one says that okay, the particle must be it must collide and touch each other, and then statement two say that uh, collide and touch uh, with each other is not enough. Okay, that is just the requirement for the reactions to happen, but just collide and touch each other is not enough. Okay, when they collide, it involves some energy. Okay, it involves some energy. Uh, it's from uh, kinetic energy to chemical energy, actually. When they collide, it depends on how strong uh, of the energy. If they collide with a very low energy, then no reactions happen. But if they collide with a very high energy, then on, uh, reactions can happen. For example, uh, for example, let's say the reactions between A and B just now, the reaction just now A and B, uh, uh, the activation's energy is 3 kJ per mole. Okay, this is the minimum energy that needs to be achieved uh, for the reactions to occur. Okay. Now let's say we have a collision. A collides with B, but the collision energy is just 2 kJ per mole only lower than 3 kJ, eh? okay, 2 kJ, then no reactions, okay? If they collide, they collide, but the energy is very low, lower than the activation energy, no reactions, okay? And then we have another collisions, okay? So this one collides, and the collision energy is 3 kJ. 3 kJ means that it's equal to the activation's energy, and uh, in this case, reactions can occur, then, then it produces a new product, AB. So means that for every reaction, there is a minimum energy need to be achieved during the collisions. Okay, if the energies of the collisions less than the minimum energy, no reactions. But if the uh, the energies of the collision is equal or higher than this activation's energy, uh, then reactions can occur. Sir. So this is uh, statement two. Okay, statement three says that particles that collide also need to have the correct orientations of co collisions. Statement one says they must collide. Statement two says that uh, collide is not enough. They must achieve certain minimum energy called activation's energy, then only the reactions can happen. Now, statement three says that they collide and the achieve the minimum energy is also not enough. Okay? This does not guarantee the reactions can occur. Okay, even though the energy is very high, but it does not guarantee that the reactions can occur. Okay, because if we want the reactions to occur, then the orientations of the collision must also correct. Must also correct. Now, what does this mean by the orientations of collision? Let me show you the examples. Okay, 
let's say A react with B, okay? If A collide with B in these directions, okay? Yeah, in this way, then the reactions can occur. So this is the correct orientations. Huh? This is the correct orientation. Let me write here. So this is the correct orientation. So reactions can occur. If the collisions happen in this way, okay? A collide with B with a very high energy, but they collide in this way, then no reaction. Even though the energy of the collision is higher than the activation's energy, yeah? okay? Even though the, the energy is high, but still no reaction if the orientations of the collision is not correct, okay? So this is the wrong orientations, yeah? okay? Incorrect orientations. I'll show you another one. Okay, so this one. So A collide with B in this way, still, okay? There's no reaction, why? Because this one, still this one is, a, is an incorrect orientation. Only when it, colli uh, the, it collides in this way, uh, then only uh, the reactions can occur, okay? If it collides in these orientations or this orientation, there is no reactions. Uh, so there are three statements in collision theory. So statements one, Okay, statement one it states that for a reaction to happen, uh, the particles of the reactants, it must collide. Okay, so that is statement one. Statement two says that uh, just collide is not enough. Okay, just collide is not enough. The collision must have energy higher than the activation energy. Uh, then only the reactions can happen. Okay, so that is statement two. And then we have statement three. Statement three says that uh, if the energy is high, that doesn't guarantee that the reaction the reactions can occur. If we want the reactions to occur, the orientations of the collision must also be correct. Okay, for example, this is the correct orientation, this is the incorrect orientations, and this is also incorrect orientation. So for these two uh, collision, there's no reactions, huh? but for this one, reactions can occur. Okay, so let's see. What is activation's energy? Just now in statement two, uh, we learned that the collisions, the energies of the collision, it must exceed uh, activation's energy, right? Okay, so now uh, we're gonna see what, what is activation's energy, yeah? So the activation energy is the minimum energy that the reactance particles must achieve at the times of collision in order for a chemical reactions to take place. That is the minimum energy yeah, that we need to overcome okay, for the reactions to take place. So if the collisions, uh, the energy is lower than the activation energy, no reaction. If it's equal or higher than the activation energy, uh, then uh, the reactions can occur. Okay? Uh, every different reaction uh, has different activation energy. Okay? Different reactions, different activation energy. If uh, the activation energy is high, then the rate of reactions will be low, okay? Because if the activation energy is high, that means, means that uh, most of the collision, uh, it doesn't uh, overcome this activation energy, okay? So it means that most of the collision fail. If most of the collision fail, then the rate of reactions will be very low, okay? But if the uh, activation energy is low, then the rate of, rate of reactions will be high. Okay, so that is how the uh, activation energy affect the rate of reactions. Eh? So high activation energy, low rate. Low activation energy, high rate. Okay, so that is what you need to know about activation energy. You need to memorize these definitions. Eh? Okay, it's a very famous question. Eh? In exam, usually if, uh, if this question come out, they will ask you what is activation energy. So make sure that you memorize these uh, definitions.